let's talk about some basic techniques you can use when you are using Briere's watercolor inks. Before we start, let's talk about some of the things that you'll need. You'll need a bucket of water, of course your watercolor inks, a palette of some sort, and some brushes. To use the watercolor inks with a palette, it's best to have something that's non-porous so that the inks will just sit there on the surface and not soak in. To add paint to your palette, squeeze a couple of drops in. You can get as much or as little as you want. If you want to make special mixes of colors, you can mix them together to create your secondary color. We'll have green here and purple. Just add a couple of drops of red and then a couple of drops over here so we can have orange and a couple of drops of yellow. So now we've got a nicely loaded palette with all of our secondary and primary colors. You'll also need some kind of paintbrush. Now you can use the Brie Reese water brushes if you like, or you can use a regular paintbrush. You'll also need a heavyweight watercolor paper. This is uh, around 140 pounds. The heavier the paper, the less chances that it will curl. Now, the first thing you'll want to do is take a paintbrush and just put a little water on it. That just helps to load it with color. And then to load your brush, you'll dip it into the ink. And so now you've got a fully loaded paintbrush. If you want to not have that much, you could take your brush and hold it alongside of your palette and remove some of the paint. So fully loaded is right into the puddle of ink and right to the paper and partially loaded is you'll take a couple of the drops of watercolor ink out. Now this first technique is called uh, wet onto dry. So I have a wet brush onto dry paper. So I'm applying the paint right to the paper. If I want to water it down, I'll go into my water container and add some water. You can get a nice graduated effect by adding more water and slowly pulling the brush to the left or right, depending on how you are painting, to dilute the color and get a little bit of a gradation. So now I want to clean my brush before going to the next color. But before I do that, I think I'll mix these together and to see what I have for a nice green. And I want to show you what wet onto wet looks like. And I have wet paint on my paper and on my brush. And so I'm just going to dab that paint onto the paper. You can blend the colors together where they meet if you want. So blending the color, you would have one color and then you add a second color and then blend together with a little bit of water to remove any of those lines and the colors will nicely kind of mix together to create this beautiful yellow green wash. So here's another technique that you'll want to have a larger brush for. So this time we'll use the wash brush and I'm going to create a nice wash of green. A wash is where I'm filling the entire area with a even application of color. You would use this in the background if you were painting a 
sky background so you could get a nice um, graduated sunset or bright morning or blue sky look. So this is a wash, an even wash of color. Some um, fun things that I like to do are to take my paintbrush and to load it with color and then splatter paint. You get these nice little splatters of color and because the wash of green was wet, the splatters of blue will kind of bloom out and create this lovely little texture on there.